say uh, food poisoning somebody eats food over here a contagious food uh, contaminated food they eat over here and then they develop the symptom so 6 hours we've got time there is no need of screening they will develop the disease it's the same thing the ultimate outcome is going to be the same thing right so that's why we do not focus on developing screening tool for those diseases now there are certain diseases where biological onset will take place and disease will show symptoms after a long 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 time let's talk about pap smear let's talk about cervical carcinoma in cervical carcinoma the disease pathology may start at 30 40 50 year old female and it will show the sign and symptoms of cervical carcinoma at around 60 65 so they've got around 30 years 20 years 10 years duration between these two times now what will happen if we detect in this early stage we can remove the uterus sign and symptoms will not develop the cancer will not develop and death will not occur so we are doing pap smear test to detect early and intervene early so that the treatment can be done properly is that clear now normally when the disease onset begins there is a stage where the disease can be detected by a screening test okay so and there is a stage in which preclinical disease is detected via screening even the preclinical ones are detected and there is this critical point critical point and then there is symptom if we do it beyond this critical point it might not be that significant let's say if we do a pap smear to a 75 year old who is already has who already has got um, signs of uh, what do we call cancer then it's going to make no difference at all okay so what we have to do is we have to do it in an early stage so screening detects and symptom develops that duration is called lead time if the lead time is lengthy then we can do the test properly and detect the disease properly so this is the most important thing in cervical cancer demand, this will be somewhere around 40 year old this will be somewhere around 60 year old so 20 years time you've got to detect maybe maybe i'm just giving an example uh, in prostate carcinoma a 50 year old man may develop maybe in this stage they may develop prostate cancer at around 65 you've got around some 10 years time okay in covid 15 days time is there okay so sometime even that 15 days may be a significant one five if uh, in covid is usually 5 to 15 days okay so 5 to 15 days is a well good amount of time because it will control the disease so lead time does not necessarily have to be very lengthy in terms of years but it should be such that intervention may be possible any queries in this slide any queries in this slide no sir okay so uh, what i'll do next is i'll differentiate this screening test with diagnostic test screening test is done in a very apparently healthy person diagnostic test is Uh, screening test is done in an apparently healthy person. Diagnostic test is done with uh, done on people who have got indication of sickness. Okay. Some problem with the internet in, in my office. If there if I if it's not audible, Deepika, please call me or send me a text immediately. Okay. Okay. Uh, screening test is applied in groups. It's done to that single patient, those who have got that symptom. Screening test is results are arbitrary and uh, arbitrary and final. Diagnostic is not final. No, diagnosis is not final, but it might change. So the result what it is done is might not be true. Arbitrary might not be true. Sometimes that screening test might give a false result, but it's the final one. Diagnosis we always confirm it. It's based on one criteria. It's based on based on number of signs and symptoms. Less accurate, more accurate. Less expensive, more expensive not the basis of treatment but it's the basis of screening. so what happens is once someone we do screening tests if it is negative we forget about the thing if it is positive then we go for the diagnostic test a 40 year old person who comes to my clinic 
if i am uh, willing to do some screening test for diabetes i'll just do a uh, fasting and fasting blood sugar and postprandial blood sugar if both are in normal limits i'll forget about it okay you have got no disease uh, i'll just leave it but if i find some pathology some uh, some abnormality in that test then i'll do a diagnostic test i must i might do repeating of that test i might be doing sg1ac something like that okay so screening test is not the basis of treatment we have to confirm it with diagnostic test sometimes screening test and diagnostic test may be the same thing sometimes okay so uh, if somebody uh, the screening test major disadvantage of the screening test is that it is less accurate it is less accurate and if it gives a wrong result one time that may lead to uh, the person developing the disease later on and we might not be knowing that is one fallacy of screening test but we are screening not on the basis of symptoms we are screening on someone who has got no sign and symptom of that disease so in in a way we can say that we were trying to find for a disease but we could not find a disease and even if there was a disease it would not have been found if we had not done the test also right so it it remains in that path so disease to be screened should fulfill a certain criteria the condition should be sought after so that means uh, for any test to do screening test we can't do screening for all the diseases okay there are certain policy some certain facts has to be clear before we do screening test uh the condition should be sought after that means it should be a problem that disease should be a problem we can't do screening we want to, we don't want to develop screening tools for something that is very 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 rare one in 2 million one in 100 million cases okay we don't want to do that it should be a sought after case latency and early symptomatic uh, asymptomatic stage it should be there if there is early so asymptomatic uh, stage then uh, we can find the cause of the disease or uh, we can find the disease uh, itself so that might be one thing another is natural history of the condition if we do not know the natural history of the condition it's useless to do the screening test facilities available for confirming the diagnosis now once we do screening test it should be we should be able to confirm the disease as well if we are not able to confirm the disease then it's useless this should be effective treatment now let's say if you find a disease and you have got no treatment then what's the point of finding the disease except for giving the trouble right so it should have effective treatment as well next is it there should be a policy to treat now if certain disease has got no treatment policy and you find out the disease out of no way then uh, is it possible to is it you is it uh, worth Uh, detecting all that disease and testing and and, and then saying that okay you've got uh, nothing can we say that so that's why there should be a policy to treat as well so basically early detection and treatment reduces mortality and morbidity that is why we want to do it screening test can be applied when test satisfies the criteria of acceptability repeatability and validity so these three points are there besides this there are some facts like yield simplicity safety rapidity ease of administration and cost all these things are there so let's go quickly through this so ease of administration now i just go from back ease of administration and cost if a screening test is very very expensive it's useless okay nobody is going to do that test say if we have to spend 10000 rupees for uh, do detecting uh, probability of uh, screening diabetes would somebody do that nobody would do this pcr when it was 4000 5000 rupees nobody was doing pcr test now it is 1000 rupees or even free in many places and everybody is doing it right so it should be free of cost and it should be easily done if you had to cut our throat and take the swab would you uh, volunteer to do pcr test no right so it's easy to do that's why they do rapidity if a screening test takes law many number of days for the reports to come then it's useless if the screening test is unsafe then it is useless if the screening test is very complicated you have to do 20 different things and it's going to be very very complicated if the yield is not good then you, you that test has got no effect so these are the minor criteria but the major ones is this acceptability repeatability and validity so acceptability it should be acceptable to all the people at whom it is aimed at basically these same things as well basically these 
the ones you are applying the test should accept the test repeatable the test must give consistent results when repeated more than once on the same individual or material under the same condition three factors observer variation may occur intra observer inter observer there could be some biological variation there could be error related to technical method but repeatability should be there as always that means if you do a certain test and you do one time today and you do after 10 15 minutes you'll give a negative result if you do again you'll give a positive result then those kind of tests will be used useless but sometimes because the observer sees differently because there's some various student or there's some technical errors that might cause some repeatability defect then that's a different thing that should not be much okay so it should be repeated if 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 it's repeated it should give the same results under the same condition next is validity it refers to what extent the disease accurately measures which it purpose to measure so what it is supposed to measure it accurately does or not that is what we want to do it audible now yes sir can you hear me audible yes sir yes sir sorry my internet just went away i'm joining from a different device now i don't have the slides now that is a problem with this. uh anyway i'll just i hope that it comes uh, it's in its back so basically there are two methods in which we do check for validity sensitivity and specificity okay it looks like the internet is back mm, okay i'll just share the screen screen i Okay, so basically, there are two parts to this screen. Yes, there are two parts to this validity. So one is sensitivity, another is specificity. Okay, so these are percentage-based values and helps in assessing the diagnostic power of the test. So if the percentage is high, 
it detects good if the percentage is low it detects bad that is what it says okay so it has got two things now a screening test uh, like i said is just an indicator of the confirmed uh, case is there or not right so after a screening test is done we always end up doing a diagnostic test yes or no so if that is the thing we have to compare screening test with that diagnostic test so there is always a gold standard test there is always a gold standard test so every disease there is a gold standard right now uh, for tb we still uh, stick to culture uh, culture the media uh, culture and sensitivity as the gold standard right but we've got other tests the pcr based test we've got uh, montu test we've got all this thing uh, thing we've got all these things that has got um, uh, uh, we compare we can comp we use that as well so what screening test does is to make sure that it is accurately measuring the, the disease or not it's accurately testing or not we know that the disease process has already started right so we want to pick up early so to pick up early uh, and say that a disease is there that diagnostic test has to come positive as well is that clear if i say someone is going to have diabetes just by uh, looking at the fact and there is no evidence of diabetes in the body diagnosis test if you do and there is no evidence of diabetes that nobody is going to believe me right so what we do is that screening test is always compared with the diagnostic test the gold standard diagnostic test among the diagnostic also the gold standard so basically in the same person we do two different tests so uh, how do we calculate the sensitivity and specificity is what i'm going to discuss now uh, so what we do is in the same person we do the screening test and we do the sensitivity we do the diagnostic test the gold standard test okay so we compare the output of it so let's say that there is a screening test the result is either going to come positive or negative yes or no so a screening test will show the result in two different forms positive and negative and next is the diagnostic test diagnostic test is going to show the result in two different form positive and negative but because it is the diagnostic test it is going to label the person as diseased and not diseased two different thing right so someone who has got a disease someone who's got a disease may be either showing positive in the screening test or may be showing negative in the screening test someone who's got no disease in the uh, diagnostic test may be showing positive in the screening test or may be showing negative in the screening test now which of the four a b c d are the accurate result is this a and this b we actually want a screening test to show positive to the ones who are showing the disease we want the screening test to show negative to the ones who are not having the disease right so we want a and d to be maximum we don't want someone to have positive screening test but in actual reality they are, don't have the disease we don't want screening test to be negative but in reality they have the disease we don't want that okay so what we do is we try to have a test which has got high to positive and high to negative so there are certain ways to do that so that is called sensitivity and specificity now how do we calculate is on the basis of this contingency table first step is we take the person we apply two tests one is the screening test another is the gold standard diagnostic test now once we do these two things what we do next is we compare it we compare it by making this contingency table this is a 2 by 2 table very very standard form of a table very very commonly used form of a table where it is always labeled as a b c d not the other way around okay this is always a b a a b is always next to b uh, b is always next to a below a is always c and below b is always d it's not the other way around where a and c is in the same line no it's always a b c d left right on the second row second row, second row left right that is how it goes so basically we've got this four thing now if i give you an example of a with a statement can you produce this two by two table is it possible to produce this two by two table 
if i say that i've done i've got a screening test where 100 people were tested and 50 showed positive 50 showed negative out of that 50 28 had disease and remaining 22 did not have disease if i say that 28 is going to be here 22 is going to be here right so this two has to come 50 this two has to come 50 so i'll give you the examples you will be able to do that don't worry but basically we make that statement on the basis of the output of the uh, screening and diagnostic test into this table ABCD. Once this ABCD comes, sensitivity specificity can be calculated very, very easily. Sensitivity. Sensitivity is defined as the ability of the test to identify correctly all those who have the disease. That is true positive. Basically, true positive by true positive plus false negative is uh, sensitivity. Let me go back to that table. True positive by true positive plus true positive among the whole who have got the disease is basically sensitivity. It's looking into this column. Okay, sensitivity uh, sensitivity is always looking into this first column, A by A plus C. A by A plus C. The true positive individuals with the disease who test positive in the disease and Sensitivity is the proportion of the detection of the individual with the disease of interest in the population. Okay, so basically, uh, if the sensitivity is high, it means two things. It means that those who come positive in this test we are doing are really positive for the disease. And if they come negative, probability of being them negative is very, very high. Okay, that is what it implies. So sensitivity is all about that first column. Next is specificity. Specificity is defined as the ability of the test to identify correctly those who do not have the disease. It will detect the true negative. If the disease, uh, if the test is negative, that means disease is also negative. That is the portion we want to see. If you go back to this table, true negative divided by the true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. True negative divided by true negative plus false positives. So among the ones, those who do not have the disease, the second column where we take the second row as the numerator. So in sensitivity, we take first column, first row as the numerator. In specificity, we take the second column, second row as the numerator, D by B plus D. D by B, B plus D. And in the same way, there are other thing as well, positive predictive test and negative predictive test. It's all about calculating how much among the positive uh, by the test are really positive. A by A plus B is positive predictive test. And how much among the negative are really negative. B by C plus D is negative predictive test. Predictive accuracy, it reflects the diagnostic power of the test. Positive predictive value is true positive by true positive plus false positive. See, what it does is it reflects the positive, uh, the test's ability it will reflect basically. The more prevalent the disease is in a given population, more accurate will be the predictive value of the positive screening test. Uh, operating character of the test are, okay, forget about this. Negative is just true negative by true negative. Among the negatives, true negative, you take the numerator, that is going to give the negative predictive value. So you all understand these two uh, stages, false positive and false negative. Let me just call one of you. Among you, 80 of you, I'd just like to call Kusal Acharya. Yes, sir. What is false positive and false negative? Well, sir, screening test got the hairs a positive eye and in diagnostic gold standard diagnostic criteria test got the hair is they're not disease they have and they're false positive bio. Money, so basically, it means that in reality, that person does not have the disease, but our screening test is still showing that disease, right? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, and false negative. False negative one screening le screening test got a negative and diagnostic test 
फलो कर डिजिज देखा अथवा पोजिटिव देखा फल्स नेगेटिव वेरी गुड ओके वेरी गुड ओके वन एक्जापल ऑल्सो राइट नाउ वी आर डुइंग दिस कोविड पीसीआर टेस्ट राइट इन कोविड पीसीआर टेस्ट सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ अ क्लिनिकल सैंपल बाय आर टी पीसीआर इज सिक्सटी थ्री परसेंट इन नेचुरल सॉइल विद दिस व्हाट डज दैट मीन sensitivity is 63% what does that mean basically sensitivity of 63% will mean that it will not detect some big portion of the disease person okay when we divide a by a plus c it's just 63 not 80 90 and 100 so we are missing out a lot of them So, true positives is just sixty percent we are detecting. Remaining forty percent we are missing out. So, uh, screening test does not necessarily always have high values. Okay, sensitivity and specificity will not always have high value if we are using it. Sometimes a screening test may have very wonderful ninety five, ninety six percent. Sometimes yes, but sometimes it's not going to have that. Same thing with COVID. If we take a nasopharyngeal swab and we do PCR. chances of us detecting the disease is very very less it's not 100% we are missing out around 30 to 40% of the cases just by doing the pcr but do we have any alternate test to detect in more higher capacity than the pcr the answer is no so if there is nothing whatever is there is the best thing so even a 60 some even a test with accuracy of around 60% 70% is a wonderful test sometimes because we lack the accurate test okay so that is another thing that i have to say regarding the sensitivity specificity and all now uh, the same thing in this concise in this figure so all this uh, you all will have to remember this uh, formula if you are going to mug up if you are going to use your brain and trying to understand then you don't have to mug up this formula uh, i suggest you to take a screenshot of this slide and keep it so that while doing the numericals it's going to be easy for you all okay now summary of criteria for evaluation of a screening test first it has to be simple okay simple to be performed and a, uh, even a paramedic should be able to perform right now you see we are hearing uh, politicians going and collecting nasopharyngeal swab it's such a simple tool right acceptable people should be ready to accept that test accuracy it gives the true measurement whatever it says now we know that is 60% rt pcr very good 60% we, we know that we are missing out but it is accurate 60% is accurate cost it should be considerably affordable sometimes even a 5000 test uh, 5000 rupee test might be an affordable test looking into the fact that we don't have any other thing and the problem is a large one so it's a very relative thing but it should be affordable repeatability it should give consistent results next is sensitivity the test should be give, be able to uh, should be capable of giving a positive finding when individual being screened has the condition being sought for and specificity the test should be capable of giving a negative test when the individual screened does not uh have the disease that they are being sought for okay so these are certain criteria that has to be fulfilled now based on these criteria we called something called yield basically it is a summarized version it is the amount of yield is the amount of previously unrecognized disease that is diagnosed as a result of screening effort okay now yield is uh, don't go into the numbers basically it means that if we did not have the screening test a large population would be ignored yield is the amount of previously unrecognized disease that is diagnosed because of this effort screening effort it's a combination of test we don't want to go into the numericals it looks into various accounts uh, like sensitivity specificity prevalence of the disease participation of the individual in the detection program all these things is uh, matter into the output of the number in the yield 
basically just understand the concept okay now i'll just give a list of certain diseases that we use as a screening test in infancy uh we can look for various diseases congenital hip duplication spinal bifida cerebral palsy visual defects Okay, let me just change the slide. Okay, just some looks like some problem there. just a minute okay <clears throat> okay there are list of disease where we can do screening on different age group for infant we can do you can see the list for infant we can do, do those test uh we can do test for all those kind of things in infant and in middle age men and women you can do test for hypertension cancer diabetes cholesterol obesity all these things we can do the test for pregnant we can do anemia toxemia rh status vdrl diabetes all these things you can do for pregnant for elderly we can do for cancer tuberculosis chronic bronchitis or copd we can do that glaucoma cataract so there are various things that we can do various tests that we can do for various age group all this does not necessarily mean that we have to do some laboratory examination sometimes just by looking we can find sometimes just by moving around the body we can find that hip location we can just look and find spinal bifida just we can look and find cerebral palsy uh, proper clinical examination will be we will be able to find um, undescended testes we can find it by visually or by doing an ultrasonogram so there are various things that can be done in a person at various age group in different age uh, in different person in age in in group of people various group of people we can do various tests and all and then we detect various diseases okay now uh, next what i want you all to do is ct scan to detect brain tumor there is a very this is a very common uh, example given and it's a real test that has been this is a thing that has been done in reality so they did ct scan in 36 uh, 3 lakh 3 lakh 60000 people they did ct scan in 3 lakh 60000 people and they they found out that out of that uh 3 lakh 60000 people they found out that that scan positive for you know, ct scan positive for brain tumor out of that uh 39% had the disease 12% did not have the disease and absent it was the report was like this now i want you all to find out the sensitivity and specificity if you look at the number if you find out you'll uh, be able to get some values for sensitivity and specificity if the sensitivity is very very high then it will be sensitivity is 39 by 40 right sensitivity is very very high specificity 
So it's going to come very, very high number. So this way we can say that CT scan helps accurately measure, uh, find out whether the person has got tumor or not. Next example over here. There, let's say there is a screening test and a diagnostic test. And we do screening test positive came in 60 people. Out of the 60, only 40 had the disease, 20 did not have the disease. So 20 were wrongly diagnosed over here, right? And the screening test has got has come negative for around 990, uh, 940, and out of which 100 had the disease. So we missed out over here. So if you calculate the sensitivity, 40 by 140 is 28%. Specificity, it's 99%. So what does this mean is, actually to find, so if somebody uses this screening test to find out whatever disease it is, it will mean that if the result comes negative, that is, Pakka negative, 99% specificity is a wonderful number. But if it comes positive, it could still be negative. That is one important point. Okay. So is this a good test? It is not a good test for all the situation, but for certain diseases, it could be a good test. If you want to rule out a disease, it's a wonderful test. It is ruling out, right? If it comes negative, it's definitely negative. But if it comes positive, it could still be negative. So if we apply this test in real life, what we can do is we might uh, create fear among a person for a few days only. Because after a screening test positive, which comes true positive only for 28%, we are going to run a definite diagnostic test, right? So when we run a diagnostic test, the test is going to come negative. Let's say, for example, we do an endometrial, we do an ultrasound, ultrasonogram of uh, uterus. And we find out endometrium is thick. Okay. Now, thick endometrium means it could be in an old person, in a 60-year-old person, it means it could mean that it is a case of endometrial carcinoma. Now that person is in a very uh, threatened condition. They have got fear, okay, I might have cancer. Then we do a biopsy to confirm it. And the biopsy comes negative. So the person will be relaxed, confirmed very fearless that okay i don't have the disease but for a few days we created a havoc right now the same test if the endometrial thickness was very very small no cancer we would not have done biopsy we would not have done anything the person would have been cleared of any every disease all the diseases of that area right so sometimes we may use a test even if the accuracy is very very low it depends on the disease it depends on the test but say if you've got another test with the same thing, for the same disease, if you've got another test, where this 28, hello, hello. Okay, so if we get another test where this 28 is 98 and this is also 98, then it's a wonderful thing, right? We will definitely opt for that other one. If you've got another test where this 28 is say 60 and that 99 is somewhere around 60, we'll still use that 99, 90, and we'll still use the test that has got 60 because true also is going to be negative, detected, but positively, right? So it is a very, very negative thing. Use the test for not just on the basis of this sensitive specificity, but also other factors, the cost and other factors coming to play at that time. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is it for the slides and all. I'll just stop the presentation now. I'll be giving you some questions. Uh, is it is it clear? Let's do one thing. Uh, can we meet again on Sunday afternoon or Monday morning? Yes, sir. Or will it be too close to the examination? I think Monday will be fine. Just about half an hour we will be meeting. I'll give I'll be giving you two questions and 
I'm, I'm deliberately putting a gap in between today and Monday is because this is because you will study other subject as well and you will study this chapter again. Okay. So that way, Monday, what we'll be doing, Monday 9.30, we'll be meeting. We'll be, first thing we'll be doing is we'll be having a revision on screening. Any queries, any questions that you have after you read your uh, book, you are going to come to me with that. And then I'm going to give you, and you all are going to look into the exam, uh, this, some examples of screening that are given in the book. And then I'm going to ask you to, ask you to do certain uh, problem that you all will be uh, submitting to me later on, but you all will be doing it um, um, for your practice. Okay. And then we'll stop. It's going to be a half an hour session on Sunday, Monday. So uh, right now I'll just uh, finish my class with this much. It's, is it all good? Yes, sir. Okay, then if there's any questions, then you may ask. Otherwise, I'll just... Uh... Okay. I'll just finish up the class now then. If there's any questions, please ask. Hey, talk. Sign up any I think we can uh, close it. Okay, looks like nobody has questions. Uh, okay, thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Study well for your exams. Thank you, sir. Thank you.